Cheers, thanks for having me. Um, I thought I'd do a talk on OpenStreetMap Notes. It's something that certainly I've been kind of using more and more often as a way of getting feedback, and I'll talk a little bit about why and how we use Notes locally in our community um, and some of the issues and problems that we come, uh, come across and maybe some ideas of how Notes could be improved and used differently in the future or things. Um, just kind of start with a brief history of Notes. So what are Notes? Um, originally, there was around 2009, the OpenStreetMap wiki isn't very specific on it. There was a separate site called OpenStreetMap Bugs, um, and that provided a very simple way of recording issues. Um, in April 2013, the Notes functionality was added into the OpenStreetMap website. Um, and around May 2014, all the bugs had been imported and it was transferred over. So this is what the old OpenStreetMap bugs website looked like. Um, and then it was added into OpenStreetMap. And actually what's great about it is it's, once you know it's there, it's relatively accessible. It's very easy to add a note. Um, anybody can do it. You put your notes on, you add some text. I think we've all probably seen and done it. Um, very easy to create. Um, and so it makes notes very easy to contribute. Um, we have a regular note contributor, and kind of he started by leaving anonymous notes, and we're like, kind of would be helpful if you created an account. So he created an account, so we knew who they were coming from, and that was great. We kind of suggested that maybe he could make the edits himself. They were just shops opening and closing, and we got a message back on one of the notes saying, I've tried, I just can't work it out. Um, but his data is very valuable, so it's great that we've got someone who, who finds it hard to use ID to add notes. Um, but he can still actually provide his knowledge, so we're very happy with that. And actually, notes are highly visible in a way that they aren't always. Um, I've got an example here of, of, a, of, a, of an issue, um, and in this case, there was a fix me added to the website, um, but it's actually hidden away in the node. Unless you're actually looking at the node, you wouldn't know that there's an issue there. Um, so that has then been turned into a note that we actually do need to just go and visit it and see, because actually when you're just going, what actually do I need to look at? Fix me's are great, but you've got to either look at another tool to see them, or you've got to, you've got to be editing in that area. And actually, if you need to go and visit somewhere to verify it, it's kind of hard to, hard to use. Um, so I think it's quite important to have, have the ability to have notes and be able to do that. So I kind of just started looking at notes. I thought it was interesting to, to have a look at some of the, the numbers on them. So the orange line, which is the line at the top, is the number of notes opened over time, and the purple line underneath is the number of notes closed. Um, the main point there is that I think we can see that there's pretty much always been more notes open than closed. There's only one exception to that, which is in May this year, I think there was probably was an effort I've, <laughs> to actually close notes, so there was, a, there was a nice peak in note closures then. Um, I've not investigated it, but there was a big increase in notes being opened in May 2016. My, I'm pretty sure that was when Maps.me added the ability to start. Someone's nodding, that's good. I was, I was gonna try and find it in the notes. So we've got this massive peak. It's kind of interesting when you see it. That was a big increase. Um, and then actually they probably improved the, the interface in August, that probably sounds about right, and the number of notes kind of, it's actually been relatively stable stable since then, but we are talking about, about 40,000 notes um, going into OpenStreetMap, and I think it's on a, a month, so that's a monthly basis. Every month there's 40,000 notes going in, and if you look at last month, about 36,000 notes being closed, and that, that's probably quite, a, that seems about typical, I think. Um, yeah, so in total, when you look across the database, there's 1.4 million notes have been closed, and there's about 430,000 notes that are still open. Those numbers will have changed because that data is a week old, but uh, <laughs> hopefully you'll forgive me. I was kind of interested as well in the how quickly notes were closed, so I tried to draw a graph. Um, so the, the one axis is the number of notes, the, so the, the x axis is the time to close a note and um, the y-axis is the number of notes. And actually, there's a lot of notes closed right at the beginning and then a very long tail. Um, so I've, I then kind of dug in further. It's worth a caveat is I was only looking at notes that are closed. So these stats don't include notes that are still open. But actually, of all the closed notes, 27.5% are actually closed within one day, which I think is pretty, pretty impressive, actually. That was higher than I, I would have expected. 
50% within 14 days and 57% within 30 days. Um, unfortunately, then the, the, it slows right down. So to get to 90% of notes, it's, it's 430 days. But I, I think there's probably are issues there, but actually some of that is also to be expected. Um, certainly my workflow for notes is using an RSS feed. So I have a feed of all the notes um, in a big chunk of Scotland, um, divided into separate things. So this is a feed of notes in Edinburgh. Um, and actually most mornings I'll have a quick go through that and actually try and, try and see, see, see what needs looking at. Um, so as I say, I map in Edinburgh, and I was just going to give you an example of the kind of, kind of area that we map in, because I think it's interesting, we're, we've moved from a city that was needing a lot of mapping to the point where we've actually now got a lot of detail. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons maybe that the, the user that leaves a lot of the notes finds it hard, because actually within all the detail, actually trying to find what you want to change is maybe hard. Um, as you can see, we've got buildings, we've got private gardens mapped, we've got trees mapped, we've got all the shops mapped, but we also kind of came up with a problem which is that within the tenement buildings you'll have a shop entrance, actually maybe there were two shops in there, and you'd have a door to stairwell which was residential, so we actually have, when we map, we map every address node and then all the shops are as point nodes within, behind that, so you've kind of got this quite complicated structure. Um, it's worth just having a look at, 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 at what that looks like if I go in. And you can see there's quite a few notes around there. Um, this one I wanted to look at before I came to save the map, which is the kind of typical, there's an empty unit, but there's a sign saying something's happening. EDI in 1979, there are our, our kind of main source of note information. But we also have a note for a school that had closed and is now a building site, so we've got that. We've got a note here where I'm kind of, Someone said, I knew this has this name, and then there's a bit of a discussion on how to tag that, and um, we kind of dropped the, dropped the ball on that one, because we, we need to make a decision on, on how best to tag it. Um, and then there's a, a restaurant, we've got a link to the planning permission. Um, so that's the kind of typical kind of, kind of way that we tend to work. I've got some more examples in a moment. Um, as I say, there's kind of a category of notes that kind of you can immediately act on. Um, here's one there, which is, as I said earlier, there's charity shop is closed. They hope to reopen elsewhere, but we can close that shop and we can close that note for now. Um, there's, there's kind of notes that you need to act on now, or you could act on now, but they probably need a survey. And an example of this is, is a discussion. Someone changed the name of a street and we kind of queried it and they went, Possibly they're, they're saying it's not a street is, is maybe a clue that they weren't quite right. But actually they, they did a reply, so you kind of, we assumed good faith, um, and they kind of insisted they were correct. Um, so finally I had a chance to go and visit it. Um, this is the bike ride I did. Um, the, the actual point we were visiting was there, so maybe it wasn't totally a, a visit to visit to, to, to go and do the note, but it was useful to do on the way. So I got to the note point, there was the street sign, um, which was actually what it was originally, so the change he'd made wasn't correct. So we were then able to correct the sign, correct the map, close the note. It's an interesting case where the mapper wasn't adding childish comments, they were censoring the map for, for whatever reason, or maybe, who knows. But that was great, we got to close it, um, and that was, that, was, that was done. And then there's, there's a kind of another category of notes, and they get harder and harder to, to solve. These are things that are, are happening soon. And I kind of I've stopped looking out for these when I was preparing for the talk. So one of those categories was was a note that went on the map back in June, and it was like, ah, oh, this place is closing soon. And quite often with these, I'll go and have a search on social media, see if I can find it. And sure enough, there on the Facebook page, some good confirmation that they were closing, but there wasn't a date, so I left it. And then when I started writing the talk in, in September, I suddenly realised, oh. What's happened to that? So, found the page. Unfortunately, it closed in June, we're now in September, but <laughs> it was there. So, there's a problem there because I saw the note appear, I checked the note, I couldn't act on the note then, and then kind of missed the actual closing of the, of the place. I, there was the note, went in, edited the thing, set the tags to old name and disused shop, boom, closed the note. So that's, 
that was now dealt with. This is also the danger of writing this talk. Every time I find notes, I keep kind of getting distracted to go and solve them and investigate them. <laughs> it means writing it takes much longer than it should. Um, but you've got, kind of got those ones, and then you've got long-term projects. Um, probably the classic one is when there's new, 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 new developments. Um, so we had a note added for a new housing development. Um, and one of the guys, Donald, added it, and it was unresolved notes, and it was housing construction with work ongoing here, could do with a survey soon, so that was two years ago. And then, classic anonymous notes, they'd been, they'd surveyed, road and path alignment improved, additional footways added, work continuing, we'll need server, further surveys. Um, and then inevitably, with an anonym, anonymous comment, the above by me, from the name of the person, and, and another element which is to say, um, Again, this one I picked up because I, I then visited it in February, made some changes, um, uploaded photos to Mapillary, did some house numbering, and then actually 18 days ago, Donald, who originally wrote the note, had been back out again, um, did some more surveying, but actually, you can see there's still a big area of development there, there's still a big area to fill, so probably that note's probably gonna be open for another year, maybe even two years before actually that's complete. So, you're kind of tracking these, these projects over many years. Um, yeah, as well as kind of building sites, kind of big infrastructure projects fall into the same thing. We had a big new road bridge built. Um, and again, that project went on for, we kind of tracked it from when it was, there was a note probably added when it was first proposed. We had the kind of in construction phase. We had the opening stage. Actually, at one stage, I think there were probably like four different notes open about the different aspects of it, the actual bridge construction, the construction areas, the speed limit changes on the different roads. So actually you've kind of got a whole load of things that are kind of grouped together that are interesting and actually open over a number of years to, before we actually close them. Um, so I've kind of been thinking about ideas to, to try and kind of make these a bit easier to manage. My first thought was try using a bug tracker um, so I think we did this during one of the pub meetups. We created an issue tracker on, on GitHub just to put some of, the, some of the issues that we're founding in as a way of just trying to manage some of the, the long-term kind of projects. And it's quite useful. There's maybe four of us that have kind of been doing it. And you can do some quite nice things. You can put things into, into um, you can use, what's it called, milestones. So you can put all your things into a milestone. You can set a date. So we've got a list of things there that we want to we want to look at and investigate by the end of this year, um, but it does lack a little bit of the visibility the notes have. Um, I also use it. To, one of the banks was closing a lot of branches, so I actually had an issue there, and I just kind of made a, a list of of all the branches and when they were expecting to be closed, and then we can actually go through through those and close them on the appropriate day. And um, for that, what I do is I generally just add a reminder for the next date, so I can. Uh, get a note to say that I need to go and make those changes. So that's kind of nearly done, that one. I can close it soon. And actually, most of those branches, not all of them, but some of them, someone has actually added a note to say, oh, this is closing on, on the state. But I started this in January, and the last branch won't close until December. So trying to just, again, follow something that was in the news then that isn't going to happen until then, I find quite a big challenge. We've also had an idea of using the wiki. As I mentioned, we're doing a, there's a lot of new development, um, and there's a really brilliant cycling map that, that was printed on paper by the local cycle campaigners. And up to now, it's all been hand-drawn. Um, but the person who's just started updating it has started coming to, to our pub meetings. Um, and actually, what they said they want to do is start using OpenStreetMap data, which was great. But actually, we're missing some of the new developments. So they're like, let's have an effort to try and map those. So, we kind of have created a list on the wiki, again, mostly pointing to the note, and it's another way of, of kind of organizing little sub-projects. Um, and it's useful, but only a few people know about it. It's, you kind of, unless you can tell everybody, you can use the mailing list, but not everybody's going to see that. Um, so I was kind of like going, is there a way of, of augmenting notes? And when I proposed the talk, I was kind of hoping I'd have time to write some code and actually prototype something. Um, seemed like a good idea. When did we submit talks back in, back in sort of April, May time? There was a long time to, to go, so I thought we were, we're on. Um, but all I've got is a diagram. My idea was to have a little app, use the API, and then maybe a little side database to augment the data and just have a, have a play with it. I think ultimately 
you'd want it to end up on OpenStreetMap websites, but I think it's kind of also nice to have a play with data and have a look at it and see what works and what's useful before we have to commit to something like that. Um, yeah, the ideas would be that you could color filter notes based on age, um, based on the last comment, because actually sometimes you, you can, you know, just if someone's looked at a note in the last few weeks, it may be a very old note, but actually you probably don't need to go back to, to it again. Um, and hide notes until a selected date, and that would kind of cover the things where actually we know that that's not going to happen until then, but you want it to then reappear kind of fresh from that point on. Um, maybe even the ability to add tags in a generic way could be useful, um, and that could maybe also cover, cover doing the dates. So lots of ideas, didn't have time to do anything. I don't think any of it's actually too complicated to do, so I'm, I'm still planning on having a, having a look at that. Um, I did just load some of the data into QGIS and try some coloring, a bit of playing. So this is kind of coloring with a light white as the new notes going to red, which is the old notes. But actually, I found it quite hard to see the really new notes. So I kind of experimented a bit. I changed the colors around. Um, and I added blue for brand new notes, notes that have been there for less than 10 days. And I think that's quite nice. That was, I thought, actually, I think there is something in this. Um, there's probably more to play with on that. Um, but I think that we can, yeah, I think you can see the potential of actually doing that. I did find a website, which I'll mention in a moment, and I've kind of done a few diagrams, kind of expanded out to the world. So those are all the open notes in the world. Um, kind of, it's, I guess it's the areas that you would expect that are coloured in the closed notes. Um, I was kind of also interested to see what happens if you layer them on top of each other. So you can layer them on top. So you've got the blue of the notes that have been closed, the orange are the notes that are still open. Um, I think you kind of get an idea of activities in parts of the world where actually maybe notes aren't being looked at and, and managed in, in the same way as they are in other parts of the world. Um, I was really curious by some of these clusters in, in the center of Africa here. And I was just kind of looking at this this morning, and I thought it was kind of an interesting set of, no interesting kind of, set of notes. That I thought sounds like a lot of notes, but they're all identical. Anybody got any idea where, why? Some of them are even from the same person. I don't know if there's an automatic tool or... Anybody? Anyway, there we are. Um, I thought that was, a, that was just a really curious, curious set of notes. So you've kind of got that ability to, to find notes and query them and maybe even cluster them together. So actually, notes that are similar like that you, could, you can cover. Um, so yeah, and that, that's the, uh, kind of a zoomed in view of Europe with the same view um, and open notes and the same thing. So there are some existing tools, not many. There's lots of tools that will tell you your notes and your comments, but nothing that really helps you manage notes. I did find this one here, Notes Review. Actually, it looks quite good. It's kind of does the job, but it's, it's very much hidden. It took me a fair bit of, it, there's a link, there is a link to, from the, one of the pages on the wiki, and it's quite nice. It clusters the notes, and it does age-based coloring, um, but probably lacks, lacks some of the visibility that, that we, we have from other places. Um, I've got some other ideas for tools that I think would be useful. Um, I think it would be useful to just have some, some tools that kind of analyze and group notes by area so you can actually look at your city and go, how many notes are there? How well are we doing at closing notes? Um, that kind of thing. I, I've, I thought that something like that might exist, but it doesn't seem to. Um, I'd also love something that helped me find notes near a path. So if you're going on a ride or a drive and you've got a GPS track, probably more suitable for bike rides. Actually, if you could load that in and say, just tell me any notes within 200 meters of that, and then you'd actually know what stuff needs to be looked out for. I think that would be really handy. Um, I'm not quite at the end, because I've got another few minutes. I've got a few, few interesting examples of notes that I found recently. Um, again, when I was preparing the talk, I was looking for new notes. There was a note about island disappearing from the transport map. And I think this is kind of an, an interesting example where actually I think probably most users wouldn't know what to do with that. Um, it certainly has gone. I, I, meant, I sent Andy a tweet about this. Um, but actually as I kind of know, right, well, let's check the coastline. There's not been any changes. It all looks good. So actually that's definitely something for that particular layer rather than a generic problem, but that's good to know. Um, this one was quite funny. This is Edinburgh Castle. And I was like, oh, no, what, what are those notes on there? And I found that one of them I'd left seven months ago. I have no recollection of leaving that note or where I got that information from. 
There's a whiskey shop, and I was like, is there really a, there can't be a whiskey shop in the middle of the castle. Maybe I was, maybe I was, yeah, maybe I had been drinking too much, but actually I did a quick look and there is a whiskey shop in the castle, so I need to go in and have a, have a look and maybe, maybe buy some whiskey and check where it is. So, so that, was, that was a kind of, no idea how I did that one. Um, and this is the oldest note, if anybody was wondering, that's still open in OpenStreetMap. Um, I put the comments through Google Translate and as far as I can tell, it was closed and someone with a comment, which is, well, if you've not mapped, the, the inside corridor in the supermarket, you're never gonna map it, but the person that opened the note did reopen the note, so I guess they still intend to, but <laughs> haven't got there yet. Um, and that's, that's me done. I hope that was interesting. Any questions or thoughts? What was that? It was a <laughs> oh yeah, just. Can you wait for the microphone that's coming? Just uh, if you wait. Coming down. It's coming down. Just so the people on the live stream can hear you. Okay. Uh, just a little bit of encouragement for you. Uh, the OpenStreetMap UK local chapter has just said that next quarterly project is going to be on notes. So. Uh, I sort of encouraged them as well because I said they were interested. <laughs> so maybe you could build yeah. some of this. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I've got a question. So you touched on that before it was a separate website, and of course it's better having it on the website where other people see it. You talked yeah. a lot about visibility. Um, and that's also through the API, which is how you can access things, or it can be an ID in JOSM. Yeah. So do you think that API and the notes feature itself needs to be extended or anything that could be done? Yeah, I think ultimately, I think probably, and I, it'll be interesting to see what other people think, I think they've certainly been able to add a little bit more information. I think there's probably a danger that you make them too complicated, so I don't think you want to go too far down the bug tracking system. Certainly, I think adding a date field would be, or a way of adding dates to notes, I think, to say, actually, we don't need to worry about this note until that date. To me, that would be really handy if it just reappeared on my feed on that date and I could then go and have a look at it. Um, certainly other people have, have, have kind of mentioned the same. I think that's how, I certainly know there's, certainly in Scotland, there's lots of us looking at feeds and notes. I don't know how other people deal with them in other parts of the world. I definitely encourage people to look at, keep an eye on their local notes and follow the feeds um, because it is a really good way of getting feedback and it's a good way of finding problems and quite often it's the way people do report problems on the map, so, yeah. yeah. Maybe we should do hashtags in them of long-term or ready, you know. <laughs> but, yeah. I, I do, yeah, as you say, uh, lots of questions. Any, um, another question? Oh, another question. we've got this chap here. They're gonna race, they're gonna race. <laughs> <laughs> Making him oh. come up the stairs. <laughs> if everyone just sat closer, and bunched up, it might be easier. Uh, what's maybe your opinion on uh, a more detailed system like uh, maps.me so that you can say like this is closed or uh, there's something new here, like uh, differentiate about um, types of nodes, like a node for a new building or a node that's a deleted building or something? Yeah, and I can, certainly I would find that useful to be able to classify things as to, to different types of things. We did a bit of that with our GitHub issues. We kind of said this is a long-term project. I think the danger would be that you make the node system too complicated and heavy with features that actually only a handful of power users use. So I think if you were to do anything, I think you'd probably want to certainly think very carefully before you overloaded it too much. That's why maybe a taggy type system where you could add tags to things could be certainly the open street map way of doing it, but even then I don't know if that's totally necessary or not. Um, as I say, that's why it would be good to just have a play around. Cool. I really enjoyed listening to it. Um, I've been doing some work on the API and notes is definitely something that needs lots of internal refactoring. Yeah. So if people have suggestions as to what can be done to the external level that would help then please let me know, file a bug report or something like that. I'm very interested in it. But if we leave the API aside, I was interested by the graph you showed of the 
um, rate of opening and the rate of closing. Yeah. And the rate of closing is always persistently behind the rate of opening. Yeah. And so the number of open bugs is inevitably increasing. Um, the film Wally -E springs to mind. <laughs> What's your thoughts on the long term? Like, will notes be useful in five years' time if they just keep on open notes increases and increases? Do we need to look at automatically getting rid of some of the, the untouched ones or, or things like that? Yeah, and I think it's a really tricky one because certainly, I think it probably depends on the areas because certainly there's areas like we. Certainly in Scotland, most of the notes are relative, and certainly in the central belt, are very well generally watched. But already we're getting to the situation where we're missing stuff because there's so many things that are in progress. And um, so I think maybe, yeah, you should, that should maybe, if a note's not being touched for a certain length of time, it should maybe get closed. I thought that, that, that oldest note was interesting because actually someone had gone and closed it, and the person that that it opened it, was reopened it, and actually, well, in some ways, that's great because it means that there is someone who still cares about it. So I guess, actually, you're right, I think even closing notes and let people reopen them if they're interested in them would maybe be the way to do it. But I'd probably do it based on last time there was an update. You know, maybe if you go a year without any updates to a note, that probably means that it's... And actually, the up, that itself might be enough to, when the people see that their note's closed, to, to reopen it as well. So actually... That's probably actually might might solve some of the problems, and or well, certainly the worst cases of them. I think, yeah. There's another question there. One question. Thanks, Chris. Great talk. Um, from my perspective, it's more of a comment I'm making here. From my perspective, I think the notes are quite abused. Um, from what I've seen, people are just putting random comments on there that don't necessarily relate to the map. They might be kind of odd debates that people are having. And, and that's another factor, I think, from some of your ideas of maybe we need to close notes after a certain time period. Um, I've also seen them used as this is a place to get your drugs and here's a telephone number to call. So, so, so I think we need to have some sort of mechanism to perhaps manage them a bit more effectively than they're being managed at the moment. Yeah, Thank I think you for highlighting that. Yeah, and certainly my experience of those, they're probably in Edinburgh. There's probably one of those a month, maybe. So it's not a big volume of them, but it's definitely if you're not watching it, they they do increase. So, yeah, and I, my feeling is, but we've not had lots of abuse of it. Is actually the anonymous notes have been more useful than not. Certainly, making people sign up for comments, I think, definitely made sense, and it prevents the op opposite side. So I think there's a balance there as well between between going and doing it. And probably the other thing worth saying is actually having, you know, certainly there's certain people that leave notes and we know we trust them and you'll just go and act on what they say because you've certainly seen enough times that they're right. Whereas other people, if it's a new user or an anonymous user, it's usually you do want to check it out first as well. So there's, there's, there's a lot of work there. Cool, brilliant. Thank you, Chris, Cheers. and uh, thank you for the question.